Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are from the rest of the world. I'm Ashish Sayal. I'm a chief engineer at Sierra Wireless. I'm also the founder and architect for the Mango platform. With me today, we have Zahid. Um, Zahid, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Zahid Chowdhury. I'm a senior software engineer. I started about two and a half months ago on the Mango team. So I've been coming on board and I think we're going to share some stuff with you today. Awesome. So thanks, Zahid, for that. So what we'll do today, uh, as we discussed, uh, Zahid, can you see my slides, by the way? You can, right? So you can see the screen where it shows building drivers. Yeah, okay. So what we'll do today is we'll be walking you through some of the complex questions there are with, with respect to building drivers for the various IoT cards we have in the, in the Mango platform. So to start with, um, what is a Mango platform? Uh, we've gone through this a few times, but once again, Mango is an open source platform which has been purpose-built for cellular connectivity. It has two core elements. The first one, a series of reference designs. Uh, we did the Mango Green in 2016. The Mango Red was launched in 2017. Um, the second core element is what we'll be covering today. These are the IoT expansion cards. This IoT expansion card standard is something we built along with our partners. Uh, so that was Texas Instruments, uh, at that time, Linear Technologies, um, NXP, Renfell, um, Talon Communications. So working with all of them, we came up with an industrial grade um, plugin uh, card, uh, which allows you to add wired wireless and sensor technologies to the Mango platform. This uh, IoT cards can be used for prototyping and can also be used for uh, final industrial development as well. So let's, let's look at what this card actually entails. It has uh, 38 pins. We use a QSFP plus connector on the Mango board. And I can actually um, show it on the screen here as well. So this is the QSFP plus connector. And, and this is where we have different types of IoT cards. With me right now is a card under development, which is for the Groove uh, connectors for Seed Studio. We have um, the Canvas card, which is a card under uh, discussion today, and we'll be going through this in detail. Uh, here's a Wi-Fi Bluetooth card as well. So if you're, if you're a developer, all you'll do is you'll stick it on the board like this, and you will see that this is ready for development. And then later on, once the development is done, you can actually use it in your final product as well. So going back to the slides right now, um, let's do that. And this, this card itself has around 38 pins. That's 38 pins exactly. What we did was we, we pretty much gave you all the interfaces that are needed for IoT development itself. So we give you an SPI, one SPI, one UART, one SDIO, uh, USB pins, so you can act as USB host. There's a single I square C, four GPIOs. There's power rails as well. We provide um, into the card a 1.8 volts, a 3.3 volts, and a five volts input. We provide uh, the ability to de detect when the card is inserted. Uh, we have a reset pin to reset the IoT card from the host. And there is um, a PPS for GPS uh, purposes. And also there is a PCM for audio. So that's a physical interface with IoT cards. Here's some IoT cards uh, that are available today. Um, this is the, the few I mentioned. And as well, if you go to mango.io under the buy section, you will be able to find a lot of other cards. Today, we have around 17 cards. And we'll be having a few more cards that will be added into the ecosystem very shortly as well. So now let's get into the meat of, of our discussion today. So I'm going to quickly go over how we uh, divide the different categories of the drivers in the Mango platform. So on the, on the column on the left, you, we give you different examples. So I'm talking you through different types of IoT cards or the drivers in the Mango itself. On the rows there, what you'll see is we divide the different drivers into four categories. The first one is when the driver is built into the kernel. That is, you will be finding the driver in slash lib slash module slash modules dot built in. So this is actually just built into the image itself. Uh, the second one is the drivers are not built into the kernel modules, uh, but the modules are present in slash lib 
slash modules. So this is uh, loaded at runtime. The third one is out of free modules, um, but the source is already present in the kernel. So you don't have to go out there into Linux kernel dot org to find those drivers. The fourth ones are out of free modules, but the source is not in the kernel. So here's where you have to go pick up uh, the different drivers. If in the case of our platform, you might have to backport it from the latest Linux uh, kernel itself. Uh, so these are the four categories. And what we are going to walk you through are around five examples. Uh, the first one is we'll be showing you an, you an IoT Ethernet card, which has a built-in uh, kernel. Uh, the driver is built into the kernel. The second is just walking you through an example where the driver is not built into the kernel, but it's present, which is the CFG 802.11. Uh, the third one is um, it's kind of interesting, because in this particular case, um, for the WP76 and 77 modules, CF3 modules from Sierra Valis, uh, the CAN subsystem is built into the, into the kernel, but the driver for MCP251X, which is the chipset used on the CAN IoT card, uh, is, not in, is out of tree module. Uh, the source is, is in the kernel, but we have to uh, build it. The fourth one is the CAN IoT for WP85. Uh, in this, um, the CAN subsystem is also not present in the kernel, so you have to build that out of tree as well. The fifth one is something we will not go through today. In this case, uh, you can find examples of this on the Mango Red itself. If you have been using the Mango Red, um, you get the BMI160, the BMP280. These drivers are uh, out of tree. We backported it to the, to the system, and now we're using that in the platform. And Zahid is going to walk you through each of these examples shortly. Uh, the, the, the last thing is we have tried to simplify um, the various steps needed to build the drivers in the kernel. We can classify that into six steps. The first one is the download, where you go to Yocto, uh, the, so, the source.cvls.com to do, download the Yocto source. Um, then you're going to search for the chip driver, whether it's present or not. You're going to create some directory on the host. Uh, you're going to modify your MDEF. Um, and then you're going to build the system, and you're going to deploy it on the, on the target itself. At that point, now let's start going through some of these detailed uh, application development itself. So Zahid, why don't we get started, and why don't you walk the users through um, this platform itself? OK. Um, so I let me share. Okay, so um, the first thing that you will want to do is some windows here. Um, the so first thing we want to do is this is um, are you getting my feed? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a the Mango um, 7603 on a Mango Red. So the first thing you want to do before you move forward is um, connect up your 7603 um, um, to your um, PC. OK, it's good now? Why don't you click on it? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you can see it on there? Yeah, you can show that one. Okay. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to connect up my Mango Red. It's going to take a few seconds to boot. So um, I connect it up and I'm doing. So it's booting up my Mango Red. It's got a 7603. So let that boot up. So what I want to do today is we're going to go through a couple of applications um, of different types of drivers. So one is definitely the CAN. And this is the CAN card over here. And you can see that everything's booting up there. Um, one thing I want to mention, um, the um, the um, 
first thing to do is to find out if the drivers that you want are in the kernel or not that you have. So for example, I've just booted up the um, 7603 on the Mango Red. So log in. And the way you can do it, let's say we're looking for the, um, the CAN driver. So first thing we would do is we would Sound good? Sorry about that, guys and gals. So hopefully you guys can see me now. Um, so the first thing we want to do is on a, um, if we get on the 7603 on the Mango Red, we want to check to see, um, let's say the first thing we're doing is for the CAN driver on here. We want to find out is the CAN subsystem drivers on there? So there are two types of drivers. One is subsystem drivers and chip drivers. So this board has a MCP2515 chip from um, microchip or the, as a CAN um, controller stuff. So um, what we want to do is we want to check if this, first of all, is the subsystem drivers there and is the chip driver there in the kernel that's already there. So, um, and maybe I should step one step back. Um, if you do, I'm assuming that everybody has run through the getting started guide and then, you know, they've gone to basically the Air Prime website on sourcecrwireless.com and they've downloaded the specific um, firmware and build for as the default for themselves. So if you go in there and I'm running through it myself right here, you will see that you know, um, you can basically either go to firmware components or you can download the generic on Windows or you can download it on Linux over here. So if you're running on Linux, my development, I do mostly on Linux. Um, today, I'm going to be um, just showing you the Yocto source tree on the Linux environment because it's three gigabytes and I didn't want to stick it in the Windows VM. But so I am going to run the Mango on the Windows VM. So do the Mango builds on there. And this is the getting started guide if you wanted to know where it was. If you go to the Mango site, you can find it there. OK, so we're back here. So now we want to we're looking for our CAN driver. So the, the kernel has been built with um, the config built into it. So that's the way Sierra Wireless has built the, all the kernels they have. So you can check in there. So if we do you can see this. This tells me when it's is not set means that this the source for this chip driver, the MCP2515, is in the kernel source from CR Wireless, but it has not been configured in. And by configured in, it's not been configured in as a module, nor has it been configured in as a built-in. So there are two types of you know drivers, you know, kernel development. I'm assuming everybody um, listening to this understands kernel development. So, um, so that's one thing we 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 know that now. The other thing we'd like to find out is is the um, CAN bus drivers built in there. So here. We can see config can is set equal to yes. Config can raw, the raw can is also set to yes. The broadcast manager is set, the gateways are set, and the virtual can is set. And the can development is also set. And so is the can um, calculate the bit time. So that tells me that the whole can subsystem, uh, that's mostly all, most of the can subsystem that you need. Now you may have special applications that need, you know, other, um, can variants. If you have those, then you will need to include, you know, um, include those as out of tree kernels. But in our case, for the 7603, all we need is just the chip driver. Okay, so that's um, the basic variant that we have. 
And let's run through this one. And I'm going to show you another variant for CAN. That'll be the 8548 um, in a few minutes. So um, now that we're on here, um, so if I wanted to um, look at the source tree for it, um, in that um, where we downloaded, the, I showed you the firmware that we downloaded from. If you go down below at the bottom of the um, page for the firmware components, you can go down to the release nine components. From there, you can, if you go down, you can get the Legato distribution source. That's the kernel and the Legato and Yocto in one source tree. That's about three gigabytes. That's the reason I mentioned that I'm not going to run it in the VM. I'm not going to show that to you. I'm going to show that to you in my Linux box. Um, so if we go to my Linux box over here, I've just downloaded it myself. Um, but if you can see this, this is the latest one for the, the 7603, the tarball. And if I go into the Yocto tree, and kernel, that's where the kernel source is. Now, as we mentioned, the chip driver is not set. So it's not in the built-in and it's not a module in the kernel. So we have to include it somehow or another. And the way we're doing it right now is we're gonna put it in the mango source tree. So first thing that we need to do is we need to find where the chip driver is in the kernel source. Just doing a little um, find with a grep pat sort of a pattern. See where it's found. So if you can see, this is where it's found. So, um, so Zahid, a question on that. So if you go back to the presentation, where exactly is it right now? What section of the presentation? Um, this is, we're trying to first stake out what things we need to do so we've done the sort of the download yes we're in the download and we're staking out what we need to do it's sort of between download and search we're doing a download and now we're doing a search in there but we're also staking out the overriding thing is to know where it belongs um the the type of module that you need type of chip driver you need is it in the kernel is it a module or is it completely going to be out of the tree? So based on that, if you remember that table I just showed you, which is you know, pretty good if you always refer back to that. Um, so now, if what, if what have I done with this? So from this, I do know I need to stick this into the Mango build. And um, so I have um, another window here. And Here is my mango build. So in the, if I go into the mango build, um, what we've done is in the Linux kernel modules directory, we've created a CAN 9607. So that basically is the where the chip driver is going to belong for the um, 9607. So if we go into there, we have a MCP251X. And if you do a diff between this and this original source, zero wireless source, you'll see that I we did change two things in there. We did set up some platform configuration data for the oscillator frequency for the CAN bus. And we did add this in just in case, just more defensive programming. If the platform data has not been set, we've explicitly set it to 2550. Technically, you didn't need any one of these per se. This one helps, but um, this one you didn't technically need. So we did make that change from the original kernel source to the um, what we put in there. The other thing we did need to do in here is we have a, what's called an MDEF file. This is, if you, you can go and read up on Legato, 
the basic um, process and how you will build dependencies for different modules. So in this case, we did say the sources, this is the source and the kernel modules here have dependencies. Requires means they have dependencies and it has a dependency on the can common, can IOT. Can OIT is one level up directory that we created and that basically holds any platform data that, um, that is needed. Okay, so by platform data, most, most of the Mango drivers are um, platform drivers. Most of them are not um, bus drivers because most of the bus drivers are already be built, have already been built into the kernel. So we've not needed to do that. Um, if we did have a new bus, then obviously we'd have to write a bus driver for it. But, um, you know, SPY, I squared C, um, can most of them are built into the kernel. They're subsystem drivers and the Linux kernel community strongly supports them. So, um, but the platform data you will have to provide if the um, driver, the chip driver needs any platform data. In our case of the MCP 2515, it does need platform data. So that's why we had to code the dependency in here to say that it depends on this can IOT. And if we go to the can IOT, the can common can IOT file there, sort of more it. See that basically, um, and you can look at this on GitHub, we basically got a probe and a remove and the you know module names and any platform data. And normally the platform data is, is what GPIOs are using, what IRQs are you using, and um, how is it going to hook into what bus. In our case, um, this is coming over the IoT slot across the SPI bus. So it is a um, CAN bus on top of the SPI bus, basically. So, and it's using the primary SPI bus. So you can be, and then we've got to remove there. Standard standard um, kernel platform um, configuration data for a driver. And so now, if we wanted to go back up, we want to go back up here. Um, by default, the um, and if I do a get diff here, you'll see that there's no diffs right now. I did create a diff file here um, that's not included in the diff. That's for my can. So currently the can by default is commented out. So we need it, we need to uncomment it to enable the can driver by default. The reason for that is the IoT slots, I don't know which which card you're sticking into an IoT slot. So you um, by default we leave it commented out. Now if your application um, needs the CAN bus, then obviously you just don't comment. Them. So um, I can basically move the sdef.can to this. I've just done this beforehand so we can sort of run through it. Now, if I do a git diff, you'll see that um, it changes to there, basically. So I've included the whole CAN subsystem there now from the Mango SDEF. The SDEF is a system definition file. You can go read up on it on Legato um, and it defines the whole system that gets built out. So you will definitely want to do that. Um, so now, once we're in here, if we want to build this thing, um, I would do CFG Legato, which uh, if you go through the getting started guide, you'll know that it basically sets up your tool chain. And then um, in my case, um, I'm doing a make for the WP76XX. Basically going to build that if you wanted to see. Actually, I should actually cut back to my, um, my VM actually. Let's go to my VM because I'm running this in a, in a VM because we are doing the Hangouts. It's much easier to do it on, on the Windows than it is on Linux. So that's one of the reasons. 
have the same setup here. But I think same thing. I have it commented out. I don't think I commented it. Yeah, commented out. So I will need to move the. Now, if I do a git diff, same thing. I'm not just a dipster. So basically, I've commented it out. And now, if I do. I guess if, I guess the, the question for most people is if you're doing a lot of development, I, I personally find Linux much easier to do development in rather than Windows with a VM. The VM is running on Ubuntu and um, in a virtual environment so it is good for the mango builds probably um you know you should be able to do the mango builds if you're going to build the whole kernel or the octo source tree then obviously it's going probably not the best um, thing so now we have our um we did build this so now i have a little alias here that i set up basically that pushes my wp76 update file to the locally connected Mango Red here. So if I do this, it'll push it to, to there. Now, I think my thing is not connected up probably. I think my VM was set up upstairs, so I, I have a feeling I have to get out of my VM and come back in. So basically power off the machine. So he starts off because I think it's a wireless connection I'm going through here. It'll need to start up again. Okay, while we're running through that, um, the um, the other one we are going to be covering is the um, the eighty five forty eight. For the CAN, for that is different than for the seventy six zero three. The CAN subsystems are not in there, so it actually didn't take that long. It's pretty fast. The VM, so maybe you can use it. Are in the right directory. I just do get this just to make sure. So now if I do an op, sign that it's up. The VM is not being able to get out. I think it just takes a while for the VM to set everything up. So now it's basically pushing it to the to the board. So now if we go to the board, 
think I have the board file open here. So it should come up. You can see it's not there, the CAN driver yet. And it will hopefully show up after a while. You want to check that if your drivers are there, you can check. You can go to the Legato directory and see, see if your .ko's are there. So obviously, our stuff did not get there. This tells. You see, uh, uh, even myself, um, there are always you need to make sure your issues are worked out. So let's just make sure. That's the one. I think that's the one that we built. So hopefully it should have gone to the ghetto, but it did not get there, it seems. I'm going to do a reboot just to be on the same side and then do a um, update on it again. Drivers are not there. And now let's try the update. Let's make sure it's. Nope. And we lost the connection to it. Lost the connection to the. Yeah, uh, basically, um, this should work. And um, I usually use the Linux um, stuff, so probably my VM is probably not set up perfectly. So um, I'm going to move on to the 8548 because I want to give you guys basically um, what's the difference between the two. OK. So we're going to disconnect this. So I have the um, 7603 here. I'm going to disconnect this. Up the eighty five forty eight, and this should come up. I have another window set up for this. So that's booting up. So while that's booting up, let's go back to the um, to the Linux um, trees that we have. So in the Linux trees here, so I have one here for this. I have another one that I have Downloaded the same from the same place for the 8548. You would um, um, go to the source.cr wireless and then follow the firmware components and then for the source distribution. 
then you would get the same legato distribution source like that. And then you would untar that. Uh, and if you go in here, under the octo kernel, that's your, your source, your source tree. So, um, here I have my um, 8548, um, and this this is identified as MDM 90x15. If you remember the other one, the um, that's the way to differentiate them. So in the same thing here, we're going to do the exact same things. We need to find out is the chip driver present, is the subsystem driver present. If they're present, are they modules? Are they built in? Um, what's their status basically? And same thing. We'll do the config dot gz, and I'll do grep. Let's say let's start with the can subsystem. What this tells me is, if I do config can, it's not set. That means the can subsystem is present in the eighty five forty eight kernel source, but it is not. It is not also a module, and it's not included at all. So obviously, we need to grab that whole subsystem and bring it in to the Mango build. OK. And unlikely, the chip driver would be, too, if that was so. And watch it. We do that. Um, the kernel, basically, the chip driver is not even present in the kernel K build. So that tells me that now I need to go back and look at the source. Is the um, chip driver there? So Sierra, the Sierra wireless um, team that had the um, kernel source, they didn't include it in the K-Build. But I can still check to see if it's there in the kernel source. Even though it's not in K-Build, there's a lot of drivers that are in the kernel source, but they are not in the K-Build. So this tells me, yes, the chip driver is there. So I do have it there. Um, so, um, so basically, what do I do, do on the 8548? Um, if we go back to Ashish's um, um, thing, that table, the table Ashish drew up to you. So this tells me that this the whole CAN subsystem and the 2515 chip driver, neither one of them are included. So we need to bring everything into the Mango build. So um, at this point, so what have we done for that? Um, basically, we um, took the um, kernel source for that. We go into Linux kernel modules. It's, it's, it's really not very complex. Uh, there's more and more, obviously, more stuff that you need to copy here. But uh, so we brought all of these in. So the AF CAN, the broadcast manager, the CAN development stuff, raw CAN stuff, everything was brought in here into the Mango build. So um, and if we do a diff say of AF CAN dot C. And we go to the um, to the source tree here. If you do a diff between that, you'll see that all I've done is I've copied that up. So there's not a lot of lot of things that you need to do there. It's not a lot of work. It's the exact same source that's in the kernel source. Three. I've just copied it in such that we can start using it on our board. So basically, um, and if the same thing applies here. You need the mdef files that you need to code up properly. So in this case, there are different dependencies here. The 2515 mdef basically has a dependency on the CAN development. Um, module and the CAN IoT module. So you do have to know which modules depend on which modules. And usually in a subsystem driver, the core module is the one that 
everybody depends on. In our, and if you have platform data, like we do on the 2515 chip, then you platform configuration data driver, you know, will have to come up first. And that's sort of the order that we've coded it in like that. If we go up here, we can build for the red. WP85. On this one too. Yeah, I should go back. I should do it in the VM because my working with the VM now. So All the same thing. Hopefully, I'll have better luck pushing stuff out to um, the um, um, so you, you can see here. We don't. We've got a bunch of different modules, but um, the can isn't there. So hopefully, um, my VM will cooperate and let me copy. not using the VM very much. So I think there are people here who use the VM a lot more, and there are people who use the Linux um, um, for development more. It's, I guess, a judgment call. I think the VM takes a little bit longer because you are running it in a virtual machine. So I think it's virtual box. It'd be nice if it was KVM or something, but it's a little bit slower because of that. But, you know, as they say, you can throw more processing cores at it and it gets faster, right? So. Okay. So hopefully this time and things will cooperate with me. Let's first make sure that I can talk. Looks better. Applying our update. That's looking better. Is there were a bunch of different modules that we added, so there should be a lot more stuff we should be adding. Okay, so let's go back on our platform there on the Manco Red. That will show up in a few minutes. I usually end up doing a um, reboot afterwards. Yes, so this looks pretty good because it is removing the modules. But what I usually end up doing is a reboot afterwards. I find it's. I just want to be on the safe side of everything, or resetting the device. So usually the flash device is it's UBIFS, so it should. UBFS is very flash friendly, so um, it should not have an issue. So I'm not going to even wait for a reboot. So I'm just going to hit the reset pin. That should make things a lot faster rather than waiting for a um, nice software reboot. So we did miss one thing here. We did need to um, put in the CAN IoT card. So I'm just going to disconnect it again. So I can show you here, I'm putting in the CAN IoT card now. And then I'm just going to put my jumper back in here. And it should come up.
So basically, your roadmap should be, I need to investigate um, what's built in, what's not built in, what's um, in the kernel source, and then um, decide how I want to proceed. And But the steps basically is you do need to download the, um, the source tree. We're doing a let's mod here and see there's a bunch of different drivers right now. Can IoT, can raw, can development, can broadcast manager, and the can, the core can itself, and the chip driver here, the MC term. Now, um, I did have some issues. So sometimes you may have issues with some of the GPIOs um, coming up too soon through Legato and stuff. So for that reason, I did create a, um, it's on the GitHub under the can common directory. If you go to the um, can common here, actually, I think I hit that. It's the other window. So there's a start can.sh. So what I did do was um, I was having issues on there. So you can. Um, you know, I was having issues in picking the IoT card out of reset, and it was usually too early or too late. So I wanted to wait till the system has started up. Everything Legato also operates at boot time. So um, let me go back to my window. So now, if I ran run the, why don't we do it like this? So you can see that I'm executing it, and this you can see the can bus is up and, um, you can look at that script and what it does basically and that's it to get the can up for the 8548 um, the same thing for the 9607 the um, or 7603 um, now the one last um, couple of other things I want to cover with you is the other um, possibilities for the um, drivers. One is, let's say it's Ethernet. Let's say you wanted to um, have Ethernet on there. Like anything else you'd want to check to see is Ethernet in there. So as you can see, config Ethernet, it's is um, built in. It's a built in module. By built in, it means it's in the VM Linux image. The Z image that for the ARM that gets pushed to the device, it's in there um, built into it. Whereas a module basically means you go into and your kernel version. That's a pretty big string. So basically, um, you will find that modules are. Um, off there in the kernel directory there. And if you ever wanted to see the built-ins, the other way you could check is, you could check in where, you know, the modules got built in, what's built into the kernel or not. So this tells me, you know, things like squash FS, which is read-only file system is built in, UBIFS is a built-in. Um, that's another way you can tell, but I personally find I just do um, config.gz and then that tells me you know, um, very quickly, you know, where everything is. Because the build, this directory won't tell you if it's in the source, but it's not in the lib module. So I, I basically just stick with config.gz. So now, if we wanted to um, um, use the Ethernet, we could do the same thing with the Ethernet. And the other, another one that I think we had mentioned was the, um, Big 80211. You wanted to see is config 80211. That's for um, the Wi Fi card. I have a tendency to hit tab. Sorry about that, guys. So if it beeps because of that. You can see that config 80211. Um, as the Mac 802.11 is in there, 
by default. That's the soft mat. So um, the 80211 that we have for, I think from TI is a full Mac. So it's basically a module. So you would have to load it. It wouldn't be where it automatically loads up and it doesn't load up through Legato. So you wouldn't put it in the kernel, just you would do a mod probe. So remember the difference between mod probe is mod probe checks all the dependencies in the kernel dependency list. Um, so basically modules.dep gets built and that is checked. So in this case, you're getting the extra checking of the kernel for that. And um, I think we've covered most of the things Ashish had on his list there. Let's just make sure that we did. So on his table, he did have, um, and I think we covered um, basically all of them. Yeah. Um, we it's really good. Uh, very, very impressive. This is a very complex topic. Uh, what, as we discussed earlier, uh, before I go further, did you have anything else to say? This? Um, I, I first, I personally feel it's very democratic what we're doing because this is open hardware. This is open source. I've worked on the kernel for 10 years. Um, most of the time it's been closed source. Um, the hardware has been closed. I used to work on base stations before, but um, this is very cool because everything is open. So um, you guys should go out and build new drivers, build new things, but feed back to the ecosystem because in the long run, it'll help you guys too. It's just like the Linux kernel community has helped grown so drastically because people have fed back into the system. So if you can, feedback into the system. I'm not saying you may not have a proprietary driver you need to write, but um, very often there's parts of it that you can release to the rest of the community. And I'd like to see you guys um, maybe participating with me in putting in new drivers in there. And I, you know, I'm very enthused by it. And um, I'll pass it back to as you said. Thanks, Aid. I, I think that's absolutely right. What we have tried to do today is um, simplify what is, in essence, a very complex topic, building drivers uh, in the kernel. Um, our plan is to, is to keep doing these uh, workshops again. We might do another one, take another driver, build it again uh, sometime in August again, just to just uh, to push this idea through so we can. So that's what I'm thinking is that we'll be, we'll be doing another one walking the developers through um, the drivers. And as Zahid said, what we would like to see is for you guys to um, join our open source community, um, um, contribute to the, on the driver side, join the forums, uh, go look at the GitHub code, become members of our GitHub community itself, contribute back. I think the we can only do so much. We This is a community-based platform and um, we're looking forward to your participation and working with you guys uh, going forward. So with that, I would um, like to um, say thank you to everyone who's um, joined our Hangout today. And if there's any questions, please reach out to us on the forum or on this YouTube channel itself. So have a good day. Have a good evening. Thank you.